In 21, rates were extremely low. 22, rates were going up. In 23, we saw the eclipse of interest rates. So the question for homeowners today is, what the heck do I do if I'm up for renewal or I'm buying a house? Do I take a fixed rate or do I take a variable rate? That is always a good question. And you're going to want to pay attention to this video if you're trying to decide if you should go fixed or team variable this year. Well, the conversation about a variable rate or a fixed rate is one that's always on Canadians' minds when they're thinking about getting a home or renewing a mortgage or taking out money in any way, shape, or form when it has to do with the mortgage. But because it's constantly evolving, and it's constantly changing, the decisions are getting harder and harder and harder for people to make, especially with such a fast moving economical environment. Now, the first thing you need to know before you go and think about, do I take a fixed rate or a variable rate is how they actually work. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how fixed rates and variable rates work, what the different types of considerations that you could take are, and more importantly, how you make that decision this year for yourself. Let's get right into specifically how fixed rates work. Well, exactly how they sound, fixed interest rates are locked in for a period of time, typically one through five years, but you can go up to seven or 10 years in Canada, although most people don't. Now with a fixed interest rate, there's no change no matter what happens in the marketplace, but when you lock in, you are locked in. Now fixed rates are basically typically determined based on a number of factors, such as what's happening in the marketplace externally and economically, but more importantly, what you really wanna pay attention to is the bond market. You see, typically banks anchor their interest rates based on and what's happening in the five-year Canada bond yield. So if you're watching that and you see a downward trend, there is a possibility that you could see interest rates declining. More specifically, interest rates are priced about 1.25 to 1.75% above the bond yield. Now, if you don't care to know what, how do you actually calculate the interest rates, but you're more curious about how to choose a term, let's talk specifically about how to determine whether or not you should choose a one, two, or three, or four, or five-year fixed rate. Now, a couple things really quickly. In a different markets, there are different rates depending on the term lengths. In the current market that you might be looking, you're likely seeing lower interest rates as you look at the scale from one year through five years. And there could be a time when you see that actually invert and see lower interest rates for shorter times and higher interest rates for longer terms. But you need to be considering a few things if you're thinking about locking in. Number one, if you're locking into a fixed rate mortgage, you are agreeing to paying that particular rate of interest for that set period of time, whether that be one, two, or or five years. Number two, if you exit that mortgage before the end of the term, you will be on the hook for a penalty and it's not necessarily three months worth of interest. In fact, it can be much greater than that. This is called an interest rate differential penalty. And while we can't necessarily talk about it in this video, we will in future videos. The most important thing to note is this is calculated differently by different lenders. We have a category of lenders that we like to call fair penalty lenders, which are much lower. And then we have other lenders which charge very, very high fees. And in fact, there is a category of cheap products which have minimum prepayment penalties that can be as much as three, four, or 5% of the balance of the loan itself. That can result in tens of thousands of dollars of fees to leave the lender early. Now, the other point that you need to be thinking about is when you're looking at a fixed rate mortgage is your lifestyle and what you're doing. If we think about mortgages, we should always think about them in a range of flexibility. So before you think fixed or you think variable, you need to look at your risk tolerance and say zero or one, meaning I am not tolerant with anything at all and I don't want any risk in my life ever, and 10, meaning I want a complete amount of flexibility to do anything and everything you want. Obviously, most people fall somewhere in the middle or in around the three to seven range, and that will help you to dictate where you're at. Now, the reason that that is so important is because most Canadians don't make it past three and a half years of their mortgage renewal, which means if the average Canadian is taking a five-year fixed mortgage, then they could be on the hook for tens of thousands of dollars in fees or penalties. Enter the variable rate mortgage. With your standard variable rate type mortgage without any restrictions, your maximum prepayment penalty or exit cost is only three months worth of interest. Now, in exchange for that, you have an interest rate that fluctuates along with the market. So there's important consideration here when it comes to variable interest rates. And two things. Number one, there's two different types of variable rates. VRM, which is what we call a fixed payment. And this is where when the Bank of Canada is going to adjust its key interest rate, your actual interest rate floats up or down. Now with this fixed payment, your payment remains the same, but the amount that goes to principal or interest will go up or down. The other type of variable rate mortgage, which is called an ARM, is where the actual payment goes up or down, which is great in a declining rate environment, not as nice in an increasing rate environment. Now, how is a variable rate actually determined is based on what happens with the Bank of Canada and what discount that you negotiate with your bank. Typically, how that works out is you receive a discount of prime minus something, let's say 0.5%. So if today prime is 6.5% and you get 0.5 off of that, 
you would actually have an interest rate of 6% today. So if the Bank of Canada reduced its rate, then you would see prime fall down and you would see your interest rate go down with it. So as you can see, the variable rate side can benefit you from two angles. Number one, if we're in a rate environment where overall interest rates are declining or going down or staying the same, typically you can pay less. If we're in an interest rate environment where rates going up, then you could end up paying more in interest. Now, remember, one of the reasons that people do go variable isn't necessarily just the interest, but also the fact that you can exit at a very low cost. So then the big question is, okay, I have a variable with a flexibility, but my payments could go up. I have a fixed with certainty knowing it's not going down. How do I make a decision? Some of the key things to think about are your lifestyle. Are you married? Are you planning to have kids? Is this a rental property? Could you be making any significant job changes or life changes in the next couple of years? You see, it's really hard in most situations for us to see more than a couple of years in the future of what could potentially happen. And so when you're picking a mortgage product, you need to be really conscious of that period of time. Because as I mentioned, most Canadians don't make it past three years, which results in so much in the form of penalties. Now, economically speaking, depending on when you're actually looking at the marketplace, my suggestion is this. Number one, know how the fixed rate works. Remember the bond yields that I mentioned. Number two, have a general understanding as to where things are in the current marketplace. Number three, look at your lifestyle and ask yourself the question, are you the type of person that would move? Would you take equity out of your home in the future if you had more equity available? Are you investing or buying for yourself? Are you very risk adverse or very tolerant? These are the different types of questions that you need to ask yourself if and when you're considering taking the mortgage product. Ultimately, you should also lean on somebody who understands this and is asking you good questions to come up with good answers. I'd like to know in the comments below, if you're taking a mortgage today, are you taking a fixed rate or a variable rate? Let me know now.